Board Game Maniacs, Maniac Rob here with all the other maniacs. It's none other than October Weed Halloween! Oh, like, come on, guys, aren't you excited? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Halloween! <laughs> Just like last year, we are playing a board game on Halloween. Well, this ain't really Halloween because Halloween's on a Wednesday and oh, this is a Saturday. This is the Saturday before <laughs> Halloween. No, it's not. It's Halloween. Um, so what game we're playing tonight is none other than Betrayal at House on the Hill. Now, our last year, we played Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Is that right that we yeah, played? Yeah. yeah. And we were in costume. Well, some of us were in costume. I was. Yeah, I know you were. Yeah, it was hot. So I, I wore a costume this year. Actually, no, I wasn't. No, that's right. You weren't. I don't need a costume. <laughs> So, the costume. <laughs> so in any case, we you probably recognize everybody here. We have Lance, we have Shane, we have Katie, and we have Thomas. That's right. And we're here to play Betrayal of the House in the Hill on Halloween freaking Eve! Woo! Yeah! Yeah, that's right. So now we've got three days we're playing on. <laughs> well, it depends on what time zone you're in and when you watch it. So they can watch it at Christmas time, and then their Christmas is Halloween. And yeah, no, they can. Yeah. Yeah. Halloween. Halloween. It's Halloween. It's Halloween. Anyhow, let's go to the game, shall we? Here's the board game setup, board game maniacs. And if you don't know how to play Betrayal at House on the Hill, we have an other, I think we have Betrayal at House on the Hill on, a, on our channel too as well. So you can always refer back to that, but pretty much what it is, is you have your heroes that are in a haunted house and they are investigating all the goings on that are going there until the haunt is hit. When the haunt is triggered and all the ghosts and goblins come in, then one of us, one of us, except for that guy right there, He's okay. always back. That's probably going to be. We'll be a traitor, and they will have a secret objective to try to sabotage or kill the other heroes while the other heroes have a specific objective that they have to complete to win the game. It is all secret. It's based in these books right here, which I'm not going to read yet. So, there are three expansions and three types for the Betrayal of the House of the Hill. There's Betrayal of the Hill, and there's also um, Widow's Walk. Widow's Walk. That's it. And there's also Betrayal of Baldur's Gate, which That's is a like a D&D version right. of right. it, yes. It's a completely different game. So the one we're playing, it has Widow's Walk mixed up into this. So we're playing with Betrayal of the Hill and Window Widow's Walk. Let's go around the table and find out which character each of us picked. So Shane, let's start off with you. Who did you pick and why? I got uh, Zoe uh, Ingstrom. I always pick her when I play this game because my daughter's name is Zoe and she thinks it's really cute when she watches the videos and she thinks it's her. What's your stats? Uh, well, she's eight years old. She's uh, three foot nine. She weighs 49 pounds. Her hobbies are dolls and music. Ooh. Like every eight year old girl. Yeah. Uh, her birthday is November 5th. Uh, she has a four speed, three might, five sanity, and three knowledge. Not so very bright. She's a little girl though. It looks like Shane's going first then because he's got the closest birthday to today's date. So far. So far. So far. So Thomas, who do you have and why'd you pick them? I have Madame Zostra. And honestly, I just like her. She's really cool. Like, yeah. It was your second choice because you originally picked the other character. Yeah, I was going for me. Yeah, exactly. I was yeah. going for Professor Longfellow. But I called Div, man! <laughs> D9. Anyways, okay, so she is 37. Five foot and weighs 150 pounds. Wait, she's five mom? feet. That's it. Yeah, she's five foot. Nothing. She's, she's a wee one. Yeah. Foot. And uh, she, her hobbies are astrology, cooking, and baseball. Her birthday is December 10th. December 10th. Yeah. That's so she has a yeah. might of four, sanity of four, knowledge of four, and speed of three. She's mm. slow. I think you need to go see a dentist. Maybe. Or I don't do know. Think? I'm getting yeah, a little bit of an overbite here. Yeah. Yeah, you need that. This. <laughs> so, Katie, who did you pick? Why? I picked. I picked Professor Longfellow. Um, his speed is four. His might is three. Sanity is three. Knowledge is five. I pick him um, every time. I call dibs. Um, because his knowledge is high, and most of the um, traitor things seem to involve knowledge in some form. So. 
That's what I think. Yeah. What, what about your other stats? How old is he? Um, he's 57. Ooh. His height is 5'11". I'm tall. You're um, also old. So, huh? You're also old. So it's a trade. That's okay. <laughs> Um, his weight is 153, his hobbies are Gaelic music, drama, and fine wines. His birthday is July 27th. And what costume are you wearing? I'm wearing Jolly Holiday with Natalie. Interesting. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. It's not very scary. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. It's not, it's not very scary though. No. Halloween's supposed to be about scary. Not, no, 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 okay, not Okay, the one time that I don't go scary and I get blind at, really? <laughs> okay, so let's move on to Lance. Lance, who did you pick and why? I picked Jenny or Clerk because uh, Cat, and that's usually what I always pick. Uh, she's 21, 5'7, 142 yeah, that's why pounds. Uh, she likes reading soccer, and her birthday is. How do you read soccer? <laughs> <I'm just thinking laughs> reading soccer, yeah. Reading and soccer. Okay, what are you saying? That's a reading, reading soccer. soccer. Reading soccer. Uh, does she just read the word soccer over and over? I said she likes reading and soccer. Or does she run alongside the, the soccer ball yeah, while sure. it's getting kicked whatever, around and try to read? Just spoiled it. Just curious. Alright, yeah. and yeah, I. Yeah, man. Oh, oh, what's your sanity and everything? I don't know. Well, uh, not your sanity, yeah, the character yeah. sanity. Now his sanity is zero if people are Speed four, might oh, four, probably sanity four. four, knowledge three. And when's your birthday? Well, the character's birthday. I already said that, March 4th. You're March just 4th. as smart as an eight year old though. Yes. <laughs> Let that sink in. My character <laughs> is uh, Flash. Oh, that's Ox Bellows. So, no, Darren Flash Williams. There it is there. So. His height is 5'11", he's 20 years old, 188 pounds, his hobbies is track, music, Shakespearean literature. Yeah, you right. You should probably want to date with Lance's character. You're about the same age, she likes to read soccer. His birthday is June. By the look of this guy, he can get a date with whoever he wants. Even Longfellow's over uh, there. Not me, I'm eight, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, his knowledge is three, his sanity is three, his might is three, and his speed is six. He's Darren Flash Williams. And that is the characters we chose. What's his birthday? His birthday is, I thought I said that, but yeah, June 6th. Yeah, I thought I was right, Chain goes first. Yay. So the way you determine how, you, how the first player, who the first player is, whoever has the closest date to this date, and where this is the Saturday before before Halloween or october -ween, then it's obviously Shane. Or actually Halloween or a week before, how do they know? That's right. This could be July. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. We just dress up for fun. I wish exactly. it was July. So, Shane's going first, and then we are just going to go around the table, and we keep playing until the haunt is triggered, and then one of us sitting at this table is going to be the traitor. I hope it's me. <laughs> Let's play this game of Betrayal at House on the Hill! Here's a shot of the miniatures that we're using. Again, this is a miniature board game that used cards and dice. It's very dice heavy and very card heavy too as well. The monsters are gonna to be tokens that will appear on the board when the haunt is triggered. Exactly. Yeah, tiles, but again, it is a self ex ex uh, discovery game. Why can't I talk? Why can't I talk today? Ah! Ah! Because it's Halloween, I'm so excited, that's oh, why. It is. I did have a lot of chocolate parts. Yeah, no, it's okay. I really did. Yeah, no, I got here and I hate that mostly double bowl of chocolate. Um, <laughs> Shelly and I, we actually were out today and I'm like, we, it's Halloween weekend. We have to get some chocolates and candy for everybody. And uh, apparently everybody is enjoying them so far, which is the way it is. And Candy Cane over here took some stuff too as yeah, well. Yeah, I put a bag behind you. You did say it was free, so. Yes. <laughs> I want that oh, big. Uh oh. I think we might have a fight on our hands here. Just no, saying. I think it is fine. Nobody's going to fight. Mary Poppins is going to be the one that controls everything. She's, she has the tiles in front of her, and also Shane is going to control the cards, which you will see as the game proceeds. If there, if there is a fight, I'll end with my head. Oh, that's right. You got the you got the conch, just like from Lord of the Flies. You got the conch, which is the umbrella. Yeah, it's a uh, parasol. <coughs> sorry, parasol. Not an umbrella. That's not stopping anything. No. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this PG, but everybody's thinking I know how it could stop somebody, but I'm not gonna say it. Let's go on with the game, shall we? Before we go on, just uh, let everybody know your speed is how many spaces you can move. So, uh, Shane, what is your speed? 
I have a speed of four. Speed of four. So he can move four spaces. Now there's no doors you can go and say, I'm going to discover this room. A door, a tile comes up and then he goes in and there's, every time you hit, if there's a sign in one of the, the rooms, your turn ends immediately and you do whatever the sign tells you. And that's how it is. So Shane, you're first. So what are you doing with Zoe? Uh, I'm just going to go out this front door and leave. No, I can't do that. It's locked. It I'm is locked. this way. All right, so a landing tile. So Katie's grabbing the tiles, and with these tiles, they have, can you show the other end of it first, the other side? So they do tell you, like, we're basement, we're ground, we're roof, or even attic too as well. And because this is a multi-purpose tile, it's ground and basement, we're on the ground floor right now, so Shane places it, and it has to line up with the doors to make sense. It is sense. a kitchen. And it's an omen yeah. card. So I have to stop and pick an omen card. So you can see this, it's a little shiny there, but you can see it's a crow. And that is an omen card. So Shane, do you want to read? I got it right here. I got the omen card of Bloodstone. <clears throat> uh, smooth and the deep green of a midnight forest. The stone is veined with crimson. They say you can't get blood from a stone. They didn't ask this one. Once per turn, I may lose one from any trait and add two dice to a maximum of eight dice to your trait roll. Then I have to make a haunt roll now. Ooh. So because Shane has the omen, every time an omen card comes up, you have to make a haunt roll. So Shane has the omen track counter. He has to slide it to one. I get to roll six dice and I have to get more than one. Right, or the haunt will be triggered. Yeah, that would be... Swear to God, you trigger the haunt. Now, that would be the Ross worst got one. it before. So if you see the dice, these are not normal dice. You can see there's twos, there's ones, and then there's blank size. Yeah. So it's a lot harder to roll very high on yeah, this. Yeah, it's not like I could just roll nothing but a one. I could get all blanks. Yes, yeah, so you got six dice. I didn't go, I got lots. Yeah, you got lots. So the haunt like does not seven. get triggered, so we're safe for now. And that end chain turned because he pulled, he discovered a tile that had a symbol onto it. And we're on to Thomas's turn. All right, totally. Okay, Thomas. Who are you and where are you going? Okay, I am Madame Zostra. I got more the red hair. No, red hair. Oh, red hair? She's a shorter one, yeah. Oh, yeah, the older lady. And what is yeah. your speed? I have a speed of three. So I'm going to move down the hallway the and then out the other side. Ooh, getting all fancy. Absolutely. So then Candy Ooh. Cane grabs a tile. I've got the dining room. And it's another omen card. Mm -hmm. Like, this is bad. We're getting too many omen cards right from the gecko. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Right. So, Tom, what do the omen card say? Okay. My omen card is a photograph. It changes as you look at it, showing different rooms in this house. Probably this house. When discovering a room, you may discard the first drawn room tile. Discovering? Shut up. Discovery. And discover the next eligible room in the room stack instead. Yes. Make a haunt roll now. Okay. So, so to you're going to do everything it says on the car, on the card, and then you have to increase the haunt to two because there are yeah. two omen cards, right. which Shane already yeah. did, yeah. and you have to roll six dice and get higher than two, or the haunt is triggered. Absolutely. You got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got it. Easily, peasily. And that ends your turn, and we're on to Katie's. We're on to Katie Candy Cane's turn. So Katie, what are you going to do? Um, she already did it, she's there. I already did it, yeah. She has one more move though. So yeah, I so, have, so I have, she moved up here. Yeah, I have a speed of four. So I moved one, two, three to there, and then I'm gonna go four and Lance, can you see this? Um, it's an event tile. Ooh, an event. So, so your turn will like end game. even if you had any more movement because there is a, a yes. token on What's there. What's the name of the room? The Operating Laboratory. That's awesome that the scientist went to the lab <laughs> first. That, yeah. that is very uh, fitting. Okay. So what does the event say, Katie? Uh, skeletons. Mother and child still embracing. Put the skeleton's token in this room. Take one die of mental damage. I need a die. Ooh, so one die of mental damage and Zero. you get nothing. So you're good. Um, once during an explorer's turn, that explorer can attempt a sanity roll to search the skeletons. Um, and then depending on what you roll, you would get something. Alright, so now we gotta find a skeleton um, so tile. Each result this. affects only the explorer making that roll. Alrighty. So that tucks in underneath the operating yeah. laboratory. Yeah, right there. There is the skeletons. Token. That's right. I said skeleton. It's not skeleton. It's skeleton. I think skeleton is trademarked though. Um. Shh. 
<laughs> as long as his name's not Jack, we'll probably be okay. It's just Skellingtons. Oh, okay. See, I'm doing my Jedi wave. Skellingtons. No, no surname? No, just Skellingtons. Yeah, we're, we're good then. So we're on to Lance's turn. All right, Lance, what are you going to do? Who are you? How many speed? I am Jenny. And I have force. So where is Jenny going to go? Purple person. Jenny. She's going to go. So you have four speed. Here. One, One two, two. Stop. Three. There's an omen card there. I'm joking. Go ahead. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. It's already been picked up. We need another ground tile. Call demon gold there, man. A green. Uh, we need a ground yes. tile. Got it. Uh, okay. And the Kelsh here. Of that one one way place. slide to basement lender. So you slide right down <laughs> to the basement. It's probably pretty Fuck, cool. Rocky. So, how many moves was that you did? You still got one more move. Yeah, you got one more. So you can discover one of your tiles. You can discover a basement. So, basement. Item. Ooh. It's an item card, and your turn ends. Door Oh, he's got a bottle. So what does it tell you? Is there a genie in it? Bright moonshine. A. An old bottle vial containing a black liquid. Once during your turn after the haunt is revealed, you can roll three dice and drink from the bottle. Six. Choose a room and put your explorer there. Yeah, wait, don't tell us what the roll is. Yeah, yeah, don't tell us what it is. Yeah, so it just, it's just after the hunt is triggered, you have to roll dice to use it. You don't have to. You use just it. choose to drink it. Yeah. Oh, I would drink it right away. Oh, I know. You would drink it right away. You don't care. Yeah. It might be fun. It has to be after the hunt. After yes, the hunt. after the hunt. Okay, so that ends your turn and we're on to my turn. And it is Flash Williams. Flash has a speed of six, so he is moving. We already flipped over the card here. And I go to the bathroom and I got an event card. I drew, the event card I drew is a mystic slide. If you are in the basement, this event affects the next explorer to your left, not in the basement. But there's only one explorer in the basement and it is Lance. So because of that, we have to go to the floor falls under you. Place the slide token in the room, then attempt a might roll to use the slide. So the slide token's there. So I have to roll my might roll, and it's three. You can see on here, might is three. It's in the You're green. As strong as an eight-year-old girl. So he's weaker than ten. I rolled one. That's well, horrible. That's probably not good. No. So zero to four, it tells you. Draw tiles from the room stack until you draw a basement room. Place the room tile. If no basement rooms are in the stack, choose a basement room in play. Who writes this? <laughs> <laughs> you fall to that room and take one die of physical damage. If it is, if it's not your turn, don't draw a card from the room. What well, is your turn? Is that on, yeah, I know. On later turns, any explorer can attempt this roll to use the slide. Right. So now I just have to roll one die for physical damage. I oh, get two. Snap. So because of physical damage, you have mental, which is knowledge and sanity, and then you have physical, which is might and speed. So you can break it up if you want, but I'm going to keep my speed at six, and I'm going to go down to two for my... Actually, that's a bad idea. Yeah, so I'm going to go down bad. one of each. So my speed goes into five, and my might goes to that's three. Insane. Stays the same. So yeah, you end up uh, in the panic room. Oh, and what does that say? Uh, when you exit, you may attempt a speed roll of three plus. If you succeed, move to any room with a dumb waiter. And there's another omen. There's, that's, that's not, another, not an omen, it's an event card. So, so you have another, another event. event card. Holy crap! <laughs> the event card that I drew this time is called Hideous Shriek. It starts like a whisper, but ends in a soul-rending shriek. Each ah! explorer must attempt a sanity roll. And then well, you bad. have to come here, and then each result affects only the explorers making the roll. But it says each explorer, so all of we us has to do it. it. Yeah. So my sanity is three, and I get a three. So one to three, take one die of mental damage. Oh boy, give me nothing, baby. Darn. So I get one die of mental damage, so I can choose sanity or knowledge. Okay, Sam, do your roll. I have five sanity. And I got uh, seven. So I'm good, nothing happened to me. Uh, um, four plus, you resist the sound, so yeah. you're good. All right, so I roll. Thomas, roll okay. your, your sanity. I got four. You have five. Oh no, you have four, okay, sorry. 
Yeah, six, you're six. good. You're good? good. You resist the seven. Katie. Oh, oh, oh yeah, you take one die of mental damage. Dun, dun, zero. Nothing, oh. so you're safe. Go ahead, Lance. What am I wrong? Sanity? You're wrong for sanity, yes. Mm. Oh, you're good. Yeah. You are good, that's right. Yep. So that's it, so... It was only me that really took the damage card back. So this is how you play the game. This is the first round. We're going to keep going, and I'll be back when something significant happens. Whee! No, I'm not a monkey. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just sniffed that bag. I did, but then you told me to do it again. I don't, I'm not but a monkey. Why did you sniff the bag? Because I love the smell of Doritos when you first open the Prove bag. It. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a monkey. Dance, monkey, dance! You are not my organ grinder. Okay. On Katie's turn, she chose to keep ahead into the upper oh, floor. No. Discovered a tile, moved in. There's an omen card, so we're turning automatically, and she gets an omen card. And Katie. I got a rope. It probably wasn't used to hang anybody today. You may move up the coal chute and from the ballroom to the gallery. Mm. You need. You do not need to roll for crossing the chasm. Um. Rope is pretty handy. Yeah, it is. You do not take damage from the collapsed room and can move from the room with the below the collapsed room token into the collapsed room. Uh, when moving via dump leader, you may move to any landing. Make a haunt roll now. So this means there are three almond cards on the table, so it's number three. You have to get three or higher. Yep. Oh, yeah. You did it. So you successfully stopped the haunt from triggering. And we're on to Lance's turn. On Lance's turn, he moved and he drew none other than another omen card. In the room, it's an abandoned room. So you drew an omen card, and what does it say, Lance? Vile! This old and crazy woman said you should drink this potion that glows with amber <laughs> light. Maybe that's how she got so old and crazy. You got two drinks so far this game, huh? <sighs> Once on your turn, you may drink from the vial. <laughs> Roll two dice. So do you want to do you want to drink before you roll the hunt, or do you want to yeah, roll the hunt? I don't want to drink at all. So you don't have to. Okay. Yeah. So you have to roll six dice. You have to get four or higher. Oh, I'm hey. going to cheat. Okay. Mess around. So let's see if you do the uh, the hunt roll if you trigger it or not. Roll two, two dice. dice. Those are the dice that I threw at your Cheeto. Well, that's, Hush, woman. That's what you want. Are you taking a drink? Yeah, I think so. Are you taking a drink? <laughs> Is it purple? <laughs> Come on. Four. Three. <laughs> this is what happens. Oh. An invigorating tonic. Gain one Ooh. in any physical trait. Ooh. That's not too shabby. And then you gotta do the haunt roll. So now Lance is gonna have to make a haunt roll and you have to beat a four. With six dice. Oh, oh my god. god. Four exactly. Oh my god. Like, Whoa. Wow. four exactly. Now, so yes. What's even worse is that he rolled all seven dice. That you oh, you have roll. Guy. Why'd you give me seven dice? Okay, that got to be a reroll. You took two, and then I, you have to roll six, dude. You rolled eight, eight, oh, eight, 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 eight dice. dice. You're the one who gave me two of the dice no. at me. Okay, reroll. Wow. Six so dice. If I fail, it's whoever gave me the dice. I would, That's freaking I would awesome. kick you in the face. Okay, <laughs> this game is getting very violent, everybody. I hate to be that. <laughs> Short people can't reach that high. I can't. Holy wow. God. You made me fail. Three. You, you, you triggered the hunt till the hunt goes off. Really? Now, really hope what happens when the hunt is triggered is that we have to look in the books and find out what room, what omen, and it will tell us who is the traitor and what happened. So stand by. We'll read this and we'll be back to find out who is the traitor in this game of Betrayal at House on the Hill. Katie's hoping to be the traitor because she loves it. <laughs> We just found out who the haunt or the traitor is going to be, and it is the left of the haunt revealer. It's and not that me. is Lance revealed it, and this guy right here is obviously the traitor because I'm the left. I'm the always guy behind the every time we play this, 
nine out of ten times. Who is the traitor? Me. You or me. That's right. That so now, I'd rather die because of the traitor. <laughs> so now what happens is in the book, I have to go and read what I have to do in the campaign. And everybody else has to read of what they have to do to try and succeed. And I have to see how I can sabotage this entire hunt and infect them. So, hold on. We'll read everything off camera. We'll be back and we'll continue the gameplay. Okay, board game maniacs. Now, I'm the traitor in this, this campaign. And it's called House of Leavings. Now, I have a minotaur to control. And I have to try to keep the Minotaur in line of sight of the other heroes so that they would test and I could take damage and kill them and it will make me stronger. My objective is simple. All I have to do is kill all of the heroes and I win and then I'm able to escape their house and unleash my power onto the world, which is really cool. So let's go back. Hopefully they did some kind of plan of what they're going to do. You know, there's other stuff that I have to follow in the book, but this here is, a, it tells me right there in the book everything I need to know. So I'm gonna keep this close to my side so that I can refer to it as I'm playing. And then hopefully I'll be able to kill all the heroes and win this game. Wish me luck, let's go back to the game. They cleared everything from the table when I came down. You can see they're all here in the main foyer and my character is in the grand staircase and I have a token that says Demon Lord. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Gene Sider. They're saying that it's a Minotaur, but is, I just read him an excerpt out of the book. So is it, it is. A, is it a Minotaur or is it a Demon Lord? Time will tell. So now we are going to continue on. You know, everybody out there, the viewers, know what my objective is because I did secretly whisper it into the camera. So I'm not going to record everything. When something happens, I will be back and we will see what goes down in this haunted house on the hill. Woo! On my turn, I explored and I've got the panic room. Well, explain how you got there. You went here. Yes, the that's event, right. The, the event, event triggered and maybe to go to somewhere with an unexplored door, which all them were because we only had this and Shane went and he was lucky enough to get to and there was a tile here with an omen card and you got an omen card. What did the omen card say Shane? I got a ring. It, uh, it's a battered ring with an incomprehensible inscription. If I attack an opponent with a sanity trait, I can then attack with a sanity trait, force them to defend with a sanity trait and take mental damage instead of physical. Pretty good card. That's not bad. It's Something else happened on Shane's turn too as well is at the end of his turn he had to roll one die and then take some damage and what did you what did you roll uh, i rolled a two so i took uh two damage to my knowledge to your knowledge yeah. all right so again when something happens we'll be back well, and we'll see how much more of that twizzler shane is eating a lot more <laughs> On Thomas' turn, he went to do some discovery too as well, and he landed in this room. He's got an omen in the kitchen. So what does your card say, Thomas? Okay, I got the mask. Ooh. Just a somber mask to hide your intentions. Once during your turn, you can attempt a sanity roll to use the mask. Four plus, you can put on or take off the mask. If you put on the mask, gain two knowledge and lose two sanity. If you take off the mask, gain two sanity, lose two knowledge. But zero to three, you can't use the mask on this turn. So you'll have to roll to see if you want if you can yep. put the mask on. He's so he's going to be constantly hurting us with mental damage at the end of all of our turns. Can so you? We're going to have to roll now. Can you turn into Loki? Is that what it is? I was thinking more like Jim Carrey. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Loki. Yeah. So what are you going to do there, Thomas? Are you going to do put on the mask or are you just going to leave it like Don't do it. No. Don't do it. No, I'm okay with not losing my sanity. Okay, so now take a die and roll it for me, please. You take two points of uh, mental damage of your choice. Now remember, you can separate one point each for mental if you want. You don't have to take two in the same characteristic. Just a little heads up, all right? And we're on Katie's turn. On Lance's turn, he moved in and he attacked Flash with his speed. And you rolled five, right? 
and I rolled three, so Flash is taking two points of damage. <laughs> and that ends the hero's turn, and now it's back to Flash's turn. As the game progresses, all the uh, heroes seem to be kind of conjugating around the abandoned room. Well, the room was abandoned. We felt bad for it, so we're keeping it. So company. it's not abandoned anymore. Yeah, we're keeping it company. That, that, I'm really glad you're doing that. We love yeah. him. And you can see the Flash here. He's right there because he's Flash. Ah, that's right. He's yeah. Flash. That's a terrible accent. Flash moved there, and the Demon Lord is there. Now, it is not the Shane's turn. He is the girl holding the teddy bear. And what are you doing, Shane, on your turn? I'm just going to sit in the corner and pet my teddy bear. Okay, so since you're sitting there in the corner and petting your teddy bear, I need you to roll one die, please. No, I know that. Yeah. I got nothing. Good. Yeah. Well, not good. Good for me. Probably not good for you. No, it's good for me. Oh, is so, it? So, it is your turn, Thomas. What will you do? I think I'm staying put exactly where I am. Okay, so you're, you're her right here. She's just gonna dance with Throw yep. one die. Nothing? No, nothing? Good, good. Okay, Katie, what are you doing? I'm just chilling, playing with my potions. Okay, no and potions. you need one roll. Two. Two. Uh, okay, take two, two, two points mentals. of mental damage. Okay. All right, and then Lance, it's your turn. You are outside of the abandoned room. Yeah, I am. What are you going to do? I'm gonna go in the abandoned room. Yeah. You're gonna go in the abandoned room? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And you're ending your turn there? So you're done with your turn, that's all you're doing? Yeah. Roll one die. We, no, we, we win. win. We win. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we win. Game over. Game over. Yeah. That's How is the game over? We win when any hero ends his or her turn with all living heroes in the abandoned room. Sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was that, Lance? Nothing. He's not a monkey either. <laughs> uh, I, no, kind of no, looks dance, like a monkey. monkey. He dance. He looks like a monkey. It's more kind of like, like more of those Asian bears. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Bears. Turn your head sideways. No, no, no. The, just the, the, the Asian bears that they've nailed yeah. are really mean too. Okay, turn your head sideways at the camera. No. The circus bears. Come on. They don't own the beans, beans though. Yeah. <laughs> So can you read um, what you had to do then, Katie? Oh, we just had to get to the abandoned room yeah, and end our turn. So we all room. had to end our turn there. Had to end your turn on the abandoned room. Yeah. So you know what I noticed too as well is there was less uh, tiles. No, there wasn't. There wasn't. No, it's the same wasn't. amount we started it's with. It's the exact same. Oh, so after the haunt is triggered, then I, I whatever said, tiles are yeah, left. I set aside. No, I set aside the abandoned room. Took all the other explorer tiles, shuffled them, split them into two piles. Put the abandoned room in one of the piles, shuffled that, put the other pile on top. Yes. It, it spread out differently over floors because cards are for multiple floors. Yes. But, you know, I, I suggested because almost all the tiles were ground floor that we should just explore the ground floor. Because it makes sense. Okay. So, the point okay, of the game. Okay, so if we win, the door resists for a moment as you shove it open. As if the house were making one last weak effort to keep you. Then you're free, back in the same place you were, before, you were before all this began. Your pity for the house's trapped spirits is tempered by your relief at not having joined them. I'm sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> we're saying that we won. Yes, you did win. Yes. You did. Yeah, we got a lot of omen cards right from the start. Yeah. So, so it was crazy. Because of the way we had to shuffle the abandoned room tile, we had to shuffle it into the bottom stack. Right. So if we had to have two massive stacks, and we had to shuffle it into the bottom stack, we would have been screwed. Yeah, there might have been two or three times as many rooms if you had to find mm -hmm. first. Yeah, but because of that, like, the Omen cards coming up all the way and everything, like, it, there was a lot of stuff that was against... There were only 11 Explorer rooms. Yeah, that's it. So I knew that, you know... It was more to our advantage in yeah. this case, than a, but if it had been the other way around, we probably yeah. would. You know, another thing it says in the book, too, for the because Minotaur... With oh, the amount by of the we way... taking damage... Yeah, you would have whittled us down. Yeah, yeah. you would have, like, yeah. We, this is all spoiler alert. Sorry, I should have said this in the beginning. But another thing, what it said in the book, too, as well, with this is if the abandoned room tile is drawn it and you try to place it against where it scratches or one of the scratches, it had to be reshuffled back into the... the so the, you knew that. You knew that, that. It did explain the scratches for you. Yes, it yes. explained to do that part, but for me well, to get over it, there was, there was so little bit. By the time I'd get over it, it was too late. 
Yeah. Because of the omens that will pop up at the well, first of the game. Also, what it said for us to do, too, if we were to draw the abandoned room tile, and you have the scratch mark in here, we would have to reshuffle it back yes. and draw the next available card, which would have been that one anyway. Yeah. Because the, and then it was said just place Again, it, anyway. it, it was against the trade array from the get-go because of where we triggered the high yeah, so quickly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Ooh. and that was the downfall. I'd be interesting, I can't say that this, this scenario was horrible, because we're, we we're not giving yeah. we're not giving it a proper proper judgment again because where the hunt was triggered so fast. If it was triggered later on, then I'm sure yeah, like so you Lance, said, more, more 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 and more <laughs> tiles would have been on the board and it would have been a lot more difficult or actually Absolutely. to draw from. So that's it for this game for Board Game Maniacs on Halloween Eve. Well, the Saturday before Halloween, but tonight yeah. it is Halloween. Yeah, sure. Woohoo! It might not be Saturday. Who knows? Nobody knows! So I hope you enjoyed this short but eventful game of Betrayal at House on the Hill. Uh, I had fun, it was interesting. I it just, I wish I was a good trader. No, I don't care if I lost. <laughs> but I just don't like being a trader because every time we play this game, 90% of the time I'm the trader. No. But hey, that's just no, the like, luck of the I would do like 70% of the time you're the trader. The other 30% is me. And if Christy was here, she would have killed me. More than likely, she is the Rob Zombie Slayer. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so there you go, Board Game Maniacs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave some comments down below. Show us some love. Subscribe to our channel. And don't forget that hopefully the giveaway is still going on on our channel. We'll give away number one where you can win a, a copy of Munchkin. Just Munchkin's a great game. It is a yes, great game. Is. So all you gotta do is just look on that video, the giveaway video, and you'll find all the details in that. So until next time, have fun, have a safe and happy Halloween, and most importantly of all, Lance, don't say it. And that is, anybody but Lance, and Shane. And that, be a maniac! Ah!